Welcome into another episode of Rip and Reef here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm. Folks, we are fully in the Christmas season. It is December. Thanksgiving was last week. We're fresh off the heels of a great episode with Dave LaGreca. Jared, uh, how is it? We, we talked about Thanksgiving. Are you in the Christmas spirit yet, or do you still need a little more time? Uh, I will get in the Christmas spirit as soon as the uh, credit card debt is paid off. Oh, so until then it's a little tough to get into it. <laughs> Understood. Understood. For me, it's until I actually put up the outside Christmas decorations because my wife and I figured out divide and conquer with us is better than us working together. So I do outside. She does inside. Everybody's happy. It's incredible, by the way. Um, just uh, uh, the day we're uh, obviously uh, recording this, uh, just seeing how many people uh, have jumped the gun and had their Christmas decorations up for weeks now in the Northeast, which is just incredible here i mean i don't want to go on a little rant or anything but like i feel like thanksgiving like is a forgotten almost a forgotten holiday like we skip we go from halloween to christmas and like it's not forgotten about but like it's a good holiday that deserves its own little few weeks football stuff in your face napping on the couch i mean who doesn't love that right we went straight from uh halloween to christmas uh you started hearing the christmas radio uh christmas uh songs on uh some uh radio stations and uh Meanwhile, we only have one Thanksgiving song, so it is kind of what it is. Yeah, we, if anybody out there is creative, you know, get, get write a Thanksgiving song. Turkeys deserve love too, you know. Yes, um, and uh, I mean, look, I, I know Adam Sandler set a pretty high bar when it comes to Thanksgiving songs, but uh, I feel like there's plenty of room in that market for other people to break through. There's a lot of aspects of that holiday that we could sing about there. It's you know, there's there's a, there's more meat left on the bone there, and somebody needs to take it off. Um, but you know, we, uh, we did wrestling last week in honor of, uh, Dave LaGreca and the survivor series. Uh, we're back to regular, uh, all four major sports this week. Uh, I, I know we haven't done a lot of basketball lately, so uh, I'm going to be bringing some old and new basketball, but I want to know what you got first here. What are we bringing to the table today? Mr. Jared Moore. So I want to do football today and I, I was having a really tough time deciding uh, between some uh, loose packs that I picked up because uh, I have these uh, 2021 uh, playbook packs uh, from uh, a couple of years ago. Picked up a okay. couple of those. Only five cards per pack. Um, if you remember, uh, maybe about two months ago, I opened up a box of these that had Jalen Hurts on the cover, and they were pretty nice cards. Yeah, I do. Um, those are nice. But I also have uh, this pack of uh, Panini 2023 cards uh, from uh, Score. That uh, I'm also intrigued to uh, open up and look through. So uh, the short answer is I'm probably going to wind up doing both. So the last time we opened up a pack of uh, the 2023 score Panini, we got that guy right there. So I am all about opening up more of those packs. I keep him nearby, Bijan. He he stays close to me all times. Nice. Uh, a little surprised you haven't stuck that in a top loader yet, though. Yeah, it needs to go in there. I just I, I dug them out. I just got I got a lot of work I got to do here over the next few weeks with cards and stuff. But uh, excited. Dude, same. I got a stack of uh, like all these MLB cards from a few weeks ago. They're all still sitting right here. <laughs> I mean, that's usually my desk. I mean, I'm just going to pick up a random pile, as you can see right there. You know, it's all mixed. And then they go into my closet to be in other piles. I need to start going through, separate, and keep, donate, all that stuff. Um, but for me today, uh, I'm going to be going with two packs here. I'm, I'm in the two hole today. Uh, so we're going to go with some 2020, 2021 uh, Panini Prism NBA cards, 12 cards per pack. And uh, just because they're uh, very nice people over there, Panini, they slipped in a little bonus pack. Very nice. That's really interesting that you got a bonus pack. Uh, what's the story behind that? So these come out of a cello pack so they were both in there so i already took the cello i already took like the outside cellophane pack off to make life a little easier for pack ripping so uh and then the other pack i'll be doing is a 94 95 upper deck series two when we had a uh, justin fensterman on on our nba special uh this was I, I did not love the pulls i had out of this pack the pack was weak so we're going back to the well and we're going to try again look for that jason kidd rookie that's what we want uh, yep uh jason kidd rookie would uh would be nice so uh I'm going to ask you, do you want to uh, kick or receive? Mm. You know what? You, you go first. You go first. Let's talk All some right. football. Let's do a little football. You know, it's uh, the fantasy football playoffs are basically a week or two away now at this point. So uh, we'll hopefully get some interesting players out of these packs that we'll be able to talk about and break down and analyze. And uh, uh, we start this pack with uh, from, uh, well, 
here a picture with the Dallas Cowboys, now with the Cleveland Browns. We start with Amari Cooper. There we go. That's a good shot there. And again, you know, we talked about the look of those cards. Those are, that's a nice border, the you know, little reflective uh, silver part with the logo. I mean, that's a good looking card. Yeah, and I, I love that the uh, the colors on the border match the team colors as well. Uh, yeah, that's always bit when you do like when little details like that get worked in. I I love that. I, I love that stuff. Uh, we go straight from that to uh, the Arizona Cardinals with uh, the now retired future Hall of Famer J.J. Watt. There we go. He had a g- good couple of seasons there before he called it a career, and uh, now he's in the booth and he's doing a good job there in the studio. Now this is interesting that I I, I got the same player in this pack twice with uh, two cards. Uh, so, uh, and we it's got? a player that I've never heard of, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> it goes to show how valuable this pack is. But, uh, we got a from the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Simi Fahoko rookie card. Yeah, I, I got nothing there. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know who it is. Um, I guess, uh, he's a wide receiver who probably never panned out. And, uh, but we also got, um, a next up card uh, of the same player as well. Simi Fehoko. Let me look that. Up. So uh, he might be a guy who, uh, unfortunately, uh, one of these, uh, maybe like a late round guy or something who just never really panned out in the NFL and kind of is what it is. Apparently he is with the Chargers currently. Uh, I don't know if that's practice squad or whatever, but he is currently listed as a, he was a fifth round pick by the Cowboys in the 2021 draft. He's got to be like on a practice squad or something because I, I've, I've never heard of this guy with any of these teams. And the Chargers are obviously, you know, they got Keenan Allen, they got Quentin Johnson, uh, Guyton. Uh, they have the other guy who I can't think of right now. Oh, uh, Terry Davis. Williams, who's perennially hurt. Uh, who'd you say? I'm sorry. Darius Davis, the rookie. The return yes, guy. Uh, yeah. So they got a million guys and he's not one of them. So it, it kind of is what it is. So I don't want to express disappointment about getting a rookie card. It's just like, it, it's hard to analyze it when I don't know who the hell the player is. Folks, Jared and I are in multiple dynasty leagues where the rosters go 40 something deep with the IDP. And uh, so, uh, you know, if, if we don't know a receiver, yeah, that, that, that tells you something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Especially an offensive skill player. Yes. Um, uh, but we finished this pack with one more rookie card, at least a player I've heard of from the New England Patriots, Sean Wade. Okay, here we go. I like that Patriots look, the white jersey with the blue pants. It's sharp. Yeah, a couple so of rookies. A couple of rookies. Yeah, they're going to be a team that's going to be picking uh, very high in the NFL draft uh, this year, which uh, I'm sure you're not thrilled as a Jet fan that uh, the Patriots might be uh, finally getting a, a, a new franchise quarterback instead of uh, Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi or. Uh, Will Greer or whoever the hell they're playing nowadays, but uh, I'm sure the Jets fan you loves the fact that the Patriots are, uh, it's finally their turn to uh, be uh, completely unwatchable for uh, quite a while. Yeah, but it's got to be like, don't give me like one or two bad years and all of a sudden whoever they get, Caleb Williams, Drake May, you know, and you know, I was actually just having this conversation with a friend. Obviously, you can't expect a rookie to turn things around, but like if Belichick is the coach that, you know, his we we all think he is, and the we you know his career and his reputation. He's got this quarterback competitive by year two. That's not good enough for me as a Jets fan. It's been twenty freaking years of them pretty much dominating the division up until Buffalo kind of took over that a couple of years ago. No, so I I need a sustained Patriots suckitude to enjoy. Like in the short term, this is fine. This is enjoyable. They're gonna you know like I think they play the Giants the week we're recording this. So like that's gonna be interesting to see who sucks more there. But uh, even though the Giants are coming off a big win over uh, Washington, but yeah, it's enjoyable short term. But I really want to see the Patriots stink for a long time. I, I need that. Right. And like I, I'm saying, this is like uh, a, a perfect example where both Yankee fans, the Red Sox are kind of going through that right now the last few years where they're just kind of, you know, a nondescript team right now where they don't really spend a ton of money and they don't have uh, the prospects coming through the system and they finish last place every year. I love that as someone who uh, despises everything about the Boston Red Sox. So, uh, I, you know, I, I don't really hate the Patriots as much as you because I'm a Giants fan. We beat them in those Super Bowls. So uh, my perspective, it's a little skewed. But, um, you know, I, I, I could understand football fans in general just wanting to see the Patriots take their medicine for a bit. Shout out John and Pember and Andrew Cooper, Patriot fans. Uh, yes. Shout out to them. Uh, so, uh, this other pack, uh, we start with a pretty good defensive player, Antoine Winfield Jr. 
I have him in. Uh, I have a share of him in one of my dynasty leagues, and he's pretty much an every week uh, defensive back start. And we go right from that to uh, DeAndre Hopkins with the uh, now with the Tennessee Titans. So uh, yeah, a rough year for the Titans. Uh, obviously, they've benched uh, Ryan Tannehill. They've now moved on to the Will Levis era. We'll see if uh, we'll see if uh, Will Levis is the guy long term. But he's definitely shown uh, pr- enough short term where at least you can be like, all right, we got to see what we have in this guy. You know, I went to the Niners Bucks game a couple of weeks ago and Will Levis came to mind because it's Levi Stadium. His last name is Levis. Like there's marketing there if he ever ends up on the 49ers. Like something's got to give there. Uh, even if he doesn't, you can always sell jeans. There you go. Yeah, listen, get somebody get on the phone. Levis Levi's. I'm sure there's some sort of quirky, cute commercial about the mispronunciation that you can come up with. Uh, let me write it. I'll, I'll, I'll charge the low, low price of four hundred and twenty dollars and sixty nine cents to consult on that one. And a couple of pairs of jeans. You got to throw those jeans in. Eh, They're probably not going to fit me. Uh, So we go to uh, Zoning Commission, uh, Josh Jacobs card with the Las Vegas Raiders. Josh Jacobs, man, last year pretty much carried one of my teams. And then this year, now that they're actually uh, running the offense the proper way, he's back to doing what he has to do. Yep, he has been uh, much better. And uh, obviously, since uh, the Raiders fired Josh McDaniels, now Antonio Pierce is the interim coach. And man, I hope Antonio Pierce gets that job. I hope they don't screw this up like they did a couple years ago with Rich Bisacci. Like, like, um, you know, I, I'm not even a Raiders fan, but you watch Antonio Pierce in these press conferences, you want to run through a wall for the guy. Remember the old Fierce Pierce report when he had his weekly as a Giants linebacker back on NFL radio? I think it was on the opening drive. <laughs> I do not, but like I could see why like Antonio Pierce was like a team captain everywhere he's been. He's always been a leader, and uh, obviously he was a big part of the Super Bowl team. He's definitely got that like Raider mentality that'll fit perfectly. Like, and I, I didn't understand why. I, I understood Rich Bisaccia was not a household name, but it's like you got a guy who got the team to rally down the stretch that year, play competitive football. He's not a big name, so he's not going to cost you a lot of money. And they just like they they went right on by him i never understood that like to me that was like a like that fell into your lap enough to give it a shot give him a two three year deal see what he does but like you said hopefully we don't make the same mistake with pierce here uh yeah 100 percent. so we finished this pack with two rookie cards uh another one uh who i haven't heard of of the uh previous cowboy guy uh jacob harris from the la rams i think i've actually heard of him but like he's just hasn't really had much of an nfl career that's correct and uh, Kylan Granson from the Indianapolis Colts, who's uh, probably their tight end one. I would say it's probably either him or Mo Ali Cox. So uh, still waiting for Jelani Woods there. Yeah, we might be waiting for a while on Jelani Woods. I feel I got a feeling he's just a guy, but yeah, um, yeah that's it for those two uh, uh, playmaker packs. So uh, let's not get the score real quick. Yeah, I love you. But we, we, I got a what a Paris Johnson rookie, a Bijan rookie. I had a few good cards in that pack last time. So you you had a few very interesting cards in that pack. There was so, a uh, Joey Bosa in that one too. Uh, well, we are going to start out uh, with a legend here, uh, a former New York Jet. Uh, but obviously he's better known for uh, his uh, legendary career with the Green Bay Packers. And uh, fortunately, uh, uh, this is a safe for work picture of Brett Favre. It's Brett Favre. So he's not going to text that one to Jen Sturger? I would think not. That, that's so, the one uh, he should te- should have texted her and he would not have gotten in trouble. Exactly. Uh, now we start with, uh, uh, we, we move on to uh, probably the bane of every fantasy football and gambler's, uh, uh, well, definitely fantasy football player. Uh, this player is probably the bane of all their existence. Taysom Hill. Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, he's definitely, it, it's, it, it, he doesn't really fit. Like, yeah, he's a tight end. And it's just, it's a weird thing. And yeah, like, he, he's not good enough to own. But then, like, the, he blows up some. Yeah, he's just very frustrating. Uh, Taysom Hill is a guy where every time he touches the ball, I root for something bad to happen, so they stop giving him the ball. Like, have tight end. I mean, not that Juwan Johnson did anything. Like, really I, I don't root for him, injuries, but, but, like, I I root for him to fumble every time he touches the ball. So they stop using him. Stop. Exactly. stop. Just stop it. Stop it. Um, so we move on to, uh, George Kittle, very nice action shot here of uh, one of the better tight ends in the national football league. It's nice to see them throwing the ball to him a little more this year than they did last year. 
Yeah, I'm very appreciative of that, uh, seeing as I have George uh, George Kittle share in one of my leagues. Um, so we move on to uh, DK Metcalf from the Seattle Seahawks. Don't call him DJ. His name is DK. Yeah, don't be one letter off on the alphabet. Yeah, because he'll get really salty about that. And uh, he's a large man. I would not want to make angry. So that is uh, correct. Uh, and another large man I would not want to uh, make angry is uh, Max Crosby from the Las Vegas Raiders. He, I mean, you want to talk about, we were talking about Antonio Pierce being the Raider mentality and a coach. You talk about the Raider mentality and a play. Max Crosby could have fit right in on those seventies Raiders. No problem. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's uh, a fantastic player. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, another large man, uh, Trent Williams from the San Francisco 49ers. 49er heavy back in the NFL. Very AFC West, NFC West pack here. It is. I uh, haven't really gotten a rookie yet in this pack, but uh, this has been a very superstar heavy pack, which we always like to see. Um, uh, we go on from there to uh, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. I, they, you know, I, he loves taking uh, enjoyment in the Chiefs when they drop passes or they can't move the ball. He, he and Good for him. You know, they were like, oh, we don't need you. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm definitely here for that level of petty, and um, I, <laughs> I, I'm also a big fan of the fact that Tyree Hill probably will be the the single biggest reason why I repeat as our dynasty league champion. Well, 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 hold on, I'm still in second place. I still got a pretty strong team. I know I lost Mark Andrews, but I, I can work. I can deal with that. Let's let's calm down. All right, I, we don't want to put the cart before the horse, so I'm not going to say anything <laughs> more on that. We got a good rookie card pull here. Uh, okay. We have from the Buffalo Bills, Dalton Kincaid. All right, that's I you know I, I know you don't like the college jerseys, but I think that's a sharp looking card right there. Yeah, it's a sharp looking card. I mean, obviously you know how I feel about the college jerseys, but that is pretty good. He's gonna be a guy next year too. That I think you know, depending upon what happens with Buffalo in the off season, but he, he, I mean, he's gonna be a top five tight end for, for sure, many many years. Uh, now we're up to all the rookie cards. So uh, we got Mike Jones Jr. from the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. Shown in his uh, LSU gear. Shout out Mike Riker. Yeah, shout out to Mike Riker. Why not? We like Mike Riker. Second week in a row, he's gotten a shout out on the show. So uh, good for him. Uh, another one. <laughs> another one of my Dynasty League uh, players, uh, rookie, uh, Tank Dell. Very nice third round find there. Tank Dell is, he is, you know, all the talk, all the rookie receivers, Addison, and I mean, Downs has had a good year, Jackson Smith and Jigba, but I mean, Tank Dell is just delivering pretty much every week at this point. I mean, if we were to re-rank the rookie wide receivers, would you go Tank Dell 1, Puka Nakua 2, Jordan Addison 3? I mean, like... The first two are locks. It's yeah. Who who really gets to be in that third spot? You can make an argument for not Quentin Johnston. That's for sure. Um, Addison. I mean, not not in Jigba. Josh Downs. Yeah, Josh Downs would be up there as well. And Josh Downs was uh, another one of those guys. Like he was not a first round receiver. So, Hmm. Uh, I I think yeah. That the 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 top two are locked in that third spot. You can have a debate between Addison and Downs, and, and you know have it out. And you're not wrong either way. Well, another player who could be in that top mix uh, if his coach actually, uh, you know, used him more would be uh, Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims, yeah. In, series. in Denver, uh, you know, we, we, I, I believe it's who, who's who's up at the end of the year. Is it uh, Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy? One of them's up at the end of the year. So Marvin Mims next year should uh, blow up. Yeah, if uh, if I had a chance to get uh, my hands on Marvin Mims, I'd probably try to do that in one of these leagues. I don't know if the assets that, 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 to go get him in any league. Not to forget Jaden Reed either when you're talking rookie receivers. I know he hasn't maybe been as consistent, yeah. but I mean, when he has good weeks, he has really good weeks. Yep, 100%. And last but not least, a uh, little sack attack action shot here of Cameron Hayward uh, sacking uh, Derek Carr. So Derek Carr in his natural position here being sacked. In the middle of being sacked is, you know, that, you know that's... You know, a that's a great shot. B, I love the like the series called Sack Attack. It's a nice looking card, and can't yeah. Hayward's one of the best to get into the quarterback, and has been yep. for a while. And that does it for uh, my NFL cards. All right, I th- I thought overall we had uh, some good pulls there, but, uh, but you know maybe not so much those first two packs, but that like that you know that Panini score, man. 
those they give you a lot in them, you know. They come through, and uh, we got a couple uh, interesting rookies there, so uh, we can't complain with that. I think I have one more five pack in the closet, so uh, I'm gonna have to maybe rip those open at some point. Sorry. Right, so now we're gonna go to the NBA. Um, we haven't done a lot of basketball, so we got to give it some love. So, do we want to go twenty? We want to go more modern or more throwback first year? What are we doing? Let's do throwback first because I'm gonna be less familiar with a lot of those players. All righty. So here we go. It is a 1994-95 series two upper deck. Of course, my favorite uh, basketball player of all time, Sean Kemp, on the cover there. Uh, we are looking for a Jason Kidd rookie card. That is the one we want to pull. No, and just like last time, this pack is a pain to open too. So we need to we need to call yeah, on the we'll have a little box a uh, box cutter or a pair of scissors, whatever you happen to have handy. That's what I go with a little mini scissors. Oh, all right. So not a good sign, but we'll see. Let's see what we got here. Let's go through the pack. All right. So we're gonna already start with a what's this series here? Uh, the Michael Jordan draft analysis. This is Khalid Reeves. He was a Miami guard. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he played uh, in Arizona. So, you know, Steve Cohen probably knows a lot about Khalid Reeves or remembers a lot about him. There you go. Good looking card, though. A uh, good looking card of him uh, playing defense there, which is uh, something you saw in the NBA in the 90s. Don't really see a lot of it anymore. Yeah, you don't, you don't anymore, but, it, you know, it, it, it was good while it lasted, right? Uh, let's see here. So now I got Liddell Eccles uh, from the Miami Heat. Good looking card there. Uh, a couple right. Miami Heat uh, pulls here early. So, all right. So far, not off to a great start. We got a little Ken Norman action from the uh, Atlanta Hawks. Couldn't tell you a thing about him. Uh, let's see next. Danny Ferry. Okay, so we got we got Danny Ferry from the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was a good forward for them in that during their day. Got the Cleveland. The so, what did you think about that era Cleveland Cavalier jersey? That was when they went from like away from the traditional blue and orange to like that like black, blue and orange. It was, it was the Sean Kemp era. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, usually when I think of Sean Kemp, I think of other things uh, aside from the the Cleveland Cavalier uniforms in 1994. But uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty sharp look. All right. Next, we have a worthless rookie, which seems to be a reoccurring theme today. Brooks Thompson. Uh, sorry, Brooks, but hey, at least he made it to the show. He made it to the show. Uh, he, he's got a haircut you could set your watch to, like Johnny Unitas in that picture. <laughs> yes, 100%. And uh, A-plus Simpsons reference there. Uh, we got Dickie Simpkins, who was buried at the end of the Bulls bench during the 90s. Might remember that name, his rookie card. All right. Yeah, well, well not... you, you got one of the Bulls from the 90s. I mean, not the one you're looking for, but hey, it's better than nothing. Got one of the first eight, nine, or ten I'm looking for. Lamont Murray from the Clippers, the rookie. So loaded with rookies, just nobody that we really care about here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, this pack is not ideal. Uh, Eric Riley from the Houston Rockets. You know, this pack is disappointing. Yeah, Fenstey's not going to be happy. I texted him this morning. I was opening it, and he was excited. Now I got nothing to be excited about. Um, oh, boy. All right, this pack, it gets a little better as we get towards the end here. Speaking of Bulls from the mid-'90s, Ron Harper. All right. Well, at least people have finally uh, heard of one of the players that uh, we've pulled from this pack. So uh, shout out to Ron Harper. Pretty good player back in the day. Yes, he was good player. And now, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Now we got another Cavalier in that jersey. Uh, Mark Price, one of the all time uh, good, po great point guards of the uh, 80s and 90s. And that's the player you think of when you uh, see those jerseys. Yeah, I mean, then this is a all-star class uh, sub-series, I guess. So we'll throw that there. Uh, two more cards to go out of this pack. Now, I'll never mind getting a Seattle Supersonic. Mr. Sam Perkins, also a good player in his day back in the 80s. By the time we started to watch him in the 90s, you know, it was the tail end of his career. But, man, those Sonics jerseys, that th that is probably my all-time favorite NBA look right there. Well, the NBA is probably going to expand in the next few years, and it looks like the two cities they want to go to are Vegas and Seattle. So uh, uh, shout out to the NBA. F uh, you know, for a change, usually it's the NHL following in the footsteps of the NBA and uh, doing something that they did successfully. Now it's uh, now the shoe's on the uh, proverbial other foot with the, the uh, NBA following the NHL uh, back into Seattle and obviously into Las Vegas. Where so Las Vegas. The team. 
So Las Vegas, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, the uh, A's uh, unanimously were, were a relocation vote to Vegas from Oakland. Um, so I have thoughts on that. We'll save those for another time. But yeah, I mean, the fact that the NBA is going to be the last one in, that's pretty fun. I mean, usually they're one of the first one in, but hey, they're going to, you know, I, I can't imagine they won't go to Vegas. And if you go back to Seattle, just do it. Do what the NFL did with the Cleveland Browns. Just bring the Sonics back. Don't do something stupid. Don't not come yep. up with some like aiming contest, blah, blah, blah. No, just absolutely go back to the Sonics. You know, modernize the look if you want. Do something with it. Exactly. Have them play at Climate Pledge Arena. Um, you know, the Sonics, you know, the old school uniforms. Um, try to get as many franchise legends involved as you can. Um, I'm sure some of them probably still live in the area. So pretty sure Sean Kemp has a chain of dispensaries in the Seattle area. So the, the, the right there, you bring back Gary Payton, Detlef Schrempf, you know, you go back to the guys from the seventies too. I mean, Hey, Kevin Durant, where did he start? He started as a Sonic, like, you know, know just, just don't do something stupid. Don't have it. Don't try it. Don't reinvent the wheel here. Just go back to the Sonics. And last Cedric Sabalos, the Lakers. And this is well, one of the, uh, which series is this? Look for uh, predictor series insets cards. Yes, yeah, so I guess that's the predictor series right there. Good looking card. Not a great pack overall, though. Uh, good looking card. Um, I'm obviously a little more modern NBA, so when I see the Lakers 23 jersey, I think LeBron James, which uh, is uh, interesting. Uh, it's really interesting when you realize this is LeBron's sixth year in LA already. I know it doesn't. If, if he still feels like he's in like year three. I know, right? And like, meanwhile, it's it's year six in LA, and it's year twenty one for LeBron. So it's just the the longe the longevity of his career is just absolutely incredible. It's something I don't think we're ever going to see again. And the fact, listen, I know he's not the player he used to be. But he's still damn competitive night in and night out. And even when Bronny comes out, you know, he's gonna that's gonna like rejuvenate him to another level too for that season. So he, he's gonna have a couple more good years for sure. Uh, maybe we'll pull uh, LeBron James in either this pack or the or the bonus pack. What do you say we get cracking here? Let's get cracking. Hopefully, we get LeBron in that pack, and uh, we get the Bronny James rookie cards whenever they come out. Okay, and we do have a little bonus pack. So if we don't get it on the first try, maybe we'll get it in the in the bonus lightning round. We'll call it. Uh, let's see here. All right, so we start off the pack, and these are really good looking cards. Uh, Devonte Graham from the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, yeah, that, that is a really uh good looking card. I mean, Panini Prison does them right. <laughs> that, that, that's all you can really say. They really set the gold. But they set the gold standard there. Now we got all right. We got a real good pull here. Uh, Tim Duncan, San Antonio Spurs. Always cool to get the the legends in uh, packs like this. And uh, you know, Tim Duncan probably one of the fifteen or so greatest players in league history. I got a buddy who's a huge Tim Duncan fan. I'm gonna put this in a penny sleeve for him. Get that out of the way. All right, next up, we got a current star who is uh, one of the better warrior Golden State Warriors of all time, Clay Thompson. Yeah, Clay Thompson having a bit of a down year. Obviously, he uh, just hasn't really quite been the same since uh, all the injuries and the torn ACL and everything. So you, you kind of wonder. I, I believe he's a free agent at the end of the year. So you kind of wonder if this is like the last, you know, the last hurrah, the last dance or so for this iteration of the Warriors with him, Draymond, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, listen, they they had their run, they had their, you know, let, let's call it what it is. I, you know, it was a dynasty for that for that decade, for those years, and uh, yeah, I mean, but all good careers got to fade, and uh, like you said, the injuries kind of took their toll on him over time. Uh, now we got Aaron Gordon uh, from the uh, Orlando Magic. Very cool, yeah, very cool of him. Uh, looks like he's celebrating a dunk there, just really fired up. So, uh, shout out to Aaron Gordon. Shout out Aaron Gordon. Uh, next in the pack here, we got uh, Josh Jackson from the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, Josh Jackson uh, put that in a penny sleeve, sent it to Corey Parson. That's uh, his guy. Let's get a, oh, we'll put that on the penny sleeve pile. Uh, next up, we got uh, Darius Baisley, Oklahoma City Thunder. Love those orange jerseys. Yeah, not as familiar with the player. Uh, I don't really like the orange. Uh, it's just something about orange jerseys I'm just not a fan of. I don't know. I don't know if it's something with the color or, or what it is, but you're a it, Devils fan and the Flyers, but make you think of that maybe subconsciously a little bit. No, I don't even think it's that. I don't think it's like the Mets either with blue and orange. I think it's just, I, I just don't think it's a really good color for 
uh, like a pro sports team. I think the Flyers do it right, but very few teams do it right. And when the Dolphins want to wear their orange jersey, that's fine. But um, all right, but even the here? Dolphins, I consider them like you know, like they have a better color to available to them in teal. It's true, but they, the orange is a nice change of pace when they do it. Uh, we got uh, Thomas Sadaransky back when he was on the Bulls. Yeah, yeah that, that's my analysis of Thomas Sadaransky. All right, now we have a green parallel here. Uh, we have Avery Bradley from the Los Angeles Lakers, so not necessarily a parallel we're looking for, but uh, nonetheless a good-looking green card. Uh, very nice. Uh, we haven't gotten to any rookies yet, so hopefully we get a rookie in there for you. We do have a Mr. Kevin Durant back on the Brooklyn Nets dominant s- series. That's a good looking card right there. That's another penny sleever. Uh, we do, yes. And, uh, you know, Kevin Durant, another all time great. So uh, there you go. And uh, tying it back to the Warriors, uh, it was good to see the, the Warriors get another championship post Kevin Durant as well. So at least yes. for them. I mean, I don't, I don't really care as like a ca- very casual basketball fan, but. Um, it was cool the fact that like they they won before he got there and they won after he got there. So I'm surrounded by Warrior fans. I'm in the heart of Warrior Country, and uh, they're not as annoying as Giant fans. So I, I don't mind the Warriors. Uh, we got Kendrick Nunn from the Miami Heat here. Uh, let's see here. I believe that's a rookie card actually. Uh, we got Killian Hayes from the Detroit Pistons. Mm-hmm. And then last in the pack, another piston. Uh, piston. We close with Langston Galloway, former Nick. So uh, yeah, that that's uh, that's certainly what I would call a mixed bag pack. You know, a couple big names, a couple uh, really good star players, and uh, you know some younger players. Where maybe uh, maybe in a few years uh, it'll be a very interesting pack. Now uh, we do have this bonus pack here, so maybe we'll uh, get something in the extra innings edition of this pack. Let's see what we have. Uh, okay, so these are like the red, white, and blue parallels. Uh, we have a, one of the better players of the last 20 years here, Rudy Gay. Yeah, there you go, and I, I like how that parallel looks. The red, white, and blue? It yeah. is pretty sharp. Uh, we have, let's see here, I believe he was traded to the Lakers since he played for the Oklahoma City Thunder in this picture. Dennis Schrader? Yeah, Dennis Schrader, pretty good player. He's bounced then, around the league a lot. He's been on a lot of teams, but a uh, pretty good player there. One of those guys that, like, you good enough to be on the team and definitely contribute, but never actually good enough to actually make the cut to stay. And then last in our bonus pack here, we've got uh, James Johnson from the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. All right, so all three of them are the red, white, and blue. Uh, in the bonus uh, pack. Yeah, so, so that's pretty cool. And there's just the three cards in the bonus pack? It's just the three cards in the bonus pack, yeah. So it's a total of 15 in the cellophane pack that I had ripped open before we uh, recorded today. Gotcha. So, yeah, uh, not not a bad pack there. Can't complain oh, yeah. about that. Not a big basketball guy, but I enjoyed doing that and ripping through, although like, I do like the throwback stuff, and those upper deck packs are killing me. Like I have one more, and I, you know, I, I'm going to open it, but like, you know, that'll be the pack that'll have the Jason Kidd rookie when I open it. That's what's going to happen, but off the air. A hundred percent. Yes. So uh, are you ready for the mystery slab? Of course, I'm ready for the mystery slab. One of the best segments on this show. Very nice. I uh, pre-cut it, but I have not opened it up and actually looked inside yet. So uh, we are going to uh, slowly do the reveal here. I can tell you, well, it's a gem in 10. So there you go. Okay. Uh, although uh, here's a, there's going to be a very... Uh, not a player you can really say a whole lot about positively uh, for obvious reasons. Um, it's a 2022 tops 87 silver pack. Wander Franco rookie card. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm a baseball player. Yeah. Excellent baseball player, but you can't really say a whole lot. Uh, unfortunately with Wander Franco because he's on administrative leave for uh some pretty serious allegations that we obviously uh, do not want to make light of. So uh, we'll just talk about the card itself. And I love the design of the card. The love throwback the old, looks. Yeah, love the old school throwback look. With the, They nailed the font there on the bottom with the Wanda Franco with the name. Uh, obviously, you have the little rookie card uh, insignia on there. It also says on the front 
you know, this is a Topps Chrome car, but this is the, uh, oh, this is for their 35th uh, anniversary. So, uh, so you have that. And then I've been looking at the back of this card and the back of the card is, uh, exactly how you would expect it to look, you know, like those old school, uh, cards back in the day. So, um, yeah, uh, that it's pretty sharp card. Uh, this will probably get listed immediately because, uh, I don't know that I necessarily want to have this one in my possession, but uh, it is a very, it's a very nice card. It's a very nice, it's, nicely designed card, and that's really all I have to say about Wanda Franco. They took the throwback look, but they like modernized it, and not like in a uh, where they overdid it. It's a nice balance of the throwback look, but making it look sharp for twenty twenty, you know, three or you know twenty twenty two in this case. Um, I will say in that NBA when we were talking about the Sonics before. That's the example we're talking about. You take something classic, you just tweak it a tiny bit, modernize it, and that's it. Leave it alone. That's what you do with the Sonics when you put a team there. Now, I'm going to say this. It's a bit of a Debbie Downer for uh, Mystery Slab, uh, considering who the person is. Um, so I'm, I'm going to propose this. Do you want me to do another one? Because I, I feel like I need something to kind of cleanse the palate after that one. Because I, honestly, I feel gross talking about Wanda Franco for the last three minutes. As long as it's not like a Milan Lucic card, I think we'll be okay when you're pulling oh, the slabs. I mean, if that's what happens, then I think we retire the segment. Oh, man. Well, now, now pressure's on. I'm going to open this up. It'll be like Adrian Peterson. So, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, we'll see. Uh, right. we'll so see. We're going we're gonna to do one more mystery slab here, and ho hopefully it is. Uh, the first uh, one, we'll call it a foul tip. tip. That's what we'll call it. It was a foul tip. Yeah, foul tip. All right, this one's uh, more fun. We can have uh, more fun with this one. This is a Mint 9.5. Uh, unfortunately, it is a Panini Instant card. It is a rookie card, and it's a player that you and I both love to watch play uh, professional football. We have Lamar Jackson. Wow, Lamar Jackson 9.5 there. What year is that? Uh, so this is a 2018 rookie card. Uh uh, Panini Instant. I, uh, this is from the NFL PA Rookie Premier. There you and go. This is a numbered card. This is one out of 295. So I, you know, Lamar Jackson is somebody that I drafted in the third round of a rookie dra of the rookie draft of our dynasty league. You know, the year he came out, and he has, you know, he's been carrying my team. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's carrying my team, but he's a huge part of why I've had success. And uh, honestly, his season last year is probably the reason I didn't beat you in the finals or get, you know, maybe get that buy and who would have known. But yeah, uh, I, Lamar's still, you know, he's MVP candidate this year. Baltimore is playing very well. It's a tough division, the AFC North, but they're still the top team as far as I'm concerned. Uh, top five fantasy player every year. Uh when he's healthy, he's a perennial MVP contender. He's always going to be in that mix when he's healthy. Uh, just one of the most fun players to watch on Sundays. Like he's one of those guys. Uh, like when the when Red Zone cuts to a Baltimore Ravens game, you're like, all right, Lamar's about to do some really cool shit right now. Let's go. And he's also that guy that like you, you don't feel out of a game if he's your quarterback. Like as long as it's not some crazy insurmountable lead, if he's your quarterback, you've got a chance to come back. Right. So. So I, I feel a lot better now after after pulling Lamar Jackson there. I feel a lot better about that segment. And as far as I know, and all the things I've heard about Lamar, like the polar opposite of the previous guy, just like a well liked guy in the community does the right thing. Like just, you know, the, the a guy when you have a face of the franchise that Lamar Jackson's kind of a guy you want. 100 percent. So now it's time we go from the totally keep the good times going. It's time for our starting lineup unboxing here on Rip and Riff on the Fantasy Alarm and the Better Sports Network. Now, Jared, I can guarantee that all of the, the pool of four is your typical baseball, basketball, football, hockey. But none of these these are all fresh in the mail over the last week or so. So none of these are people we've uh, even been in the, uh, in the selection pool before. So, Ooh, all right. So that's intriguing. All right. Go our, ahead. Our hockey one is an all time uh, great defenseman. Who had a, a, a his longevity was unbelievable. Uh, for the baseball one, uh, all time great relief pitcher. The basketball player was somebody that was mentioned on this very episode last week. And then the football one is an all time great quarterback. You can't debate, he's an all time great. Now I'm trying to remember the basketball player we mentioned last week. Um, 
Ooh, that, that is really interesting. I don't know that I'm going to pick that one anyways. Um, tell me about the football player again. And this does not count as my question, but tell me about the football player again. And the, and the all baseball, time great quarterback. Baseball player is an all time great reliever. Correct. The football player is all time great quarterback. Can't even dispute it. All time great quarterback. Okay. Um, I mean, I have some guesses. So I, I think my question should be uh, pertaining to the basketball player. Okay. Um, so. This basketball player, I'm assuming, is someone that is a former uh, Sirius XM colleague in uh, some uh, extent, and I would assume that he is probably best known today for uh, being uh, a bit of a meme, for lack of a better term, because he calls college basketball games with uh, Dave Pash. Uh, the, you're not on the right path for who the basketball person is. Oh, damn it. All right. All right. <laughs> Because you obviously know where I was going with that one. Um, yes. All right. So uh, I have no short term or long term memory. I'm a big dumb idiot. So I'm not going to try to guess the basketball one. All right. Um, I uh, I want to open the football one. So my guess there is going to be John Elway. Um, I'm going to guess the hockey player is Nick Lidstrom and the baseball player um <laughs> just <laughs> i want I, just because i want to throw a random fun name i'm gonna guess is rob Nen. rob Nen, uh, that is a fun name and he, for a couple of years he was like a top-notch closer too then was you know for you know, two years he was up there all right so but, we'll go. it's not right <laughs> it's not right so we'll start with baseball um if mariano rivera never existed we would talk about trevor hoffman as the greatest closer of all time probably uh we probably would yes but uh <laughs> Alas, uh, Mariano does exist. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, unfortunately, he exists. I mean, come on. How many, you know, baseball games is the one sport where you want to leave early, but as long as Mariano Rivera was a, the chance of him coming out, there was no way I was leaving early. Not a chance. Yep. Go back on Yankee Stadium right there. The basketball player, Derek Coleman, who was a member of the audience last week. We talked about him with Dave LaGreca and all the net stuff. This is. Derek Coleman has three different starting lineups with from the Nets. Just the uh, they really tried with him, but he didn't really pan out. And then the uh, hockey player, while well, let's say again, I was gonna say someone from uh, uh, whoever made the starting lineup. Someone was a big fan of the New Jersey Nets, and uh, obviously Derek Coleman came up with our conversation in regards to uh, the old Brendan Burn Arena. So and I uh, should have that one. I, well, obviously, I was going with Bill Walton, but. <laughs> Now, maybe they were a big Syracuse fan because Coleman was a, a good player at Syracuse. Now, the hockey player, while well, Lidstrom, based off my description, is a very good guess. We were actually referring to Mr. Chris Chelios. Chris Chelios, yeah. Shout out to him for uh, resurfacing on uh, TNT as part of their uh, studio panel. I consider him like the Jerry Rice of the NFL in the sense that even when he was like in his older age, his 40s, his workout routines, like guys half his age, just could not keep up with him. And I mean, I guess if you're going to play hockey till you're 47 years old, you need to kind of stay in that tip top shape. But man, you talk about a guy who was a fitness freak before his time. It was Chris Chelios. Now, get to the one we're going to open up today. You guessed John Elway. And while this guy did play on the Broncos and win a Super Bowl with the Broncos, this is Peyton Manning. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that's interesting. And <laughs> I don't want to steal the same joke you used earlier about a haircut you could set your watch to. But uh, yeah, he uh, Peyton Manning has a very uh, Johnny Unitas look there. He does have a Johnny Unitas look there. I mean, his forehead is massive, so that would probably be like a daylight savings haircut because of the extra space. But, you know, we'll see. All right, so here we got Peyton Manning here. This is the first Colt I have in my collection. A little surprising, especially since the Colts were, you know, an interesting team in that era. You know, Edger and James, you know, Marshall Falk, Marvin Harrison. They, I do have a Marshall Falk one unopened in a box downstairs. I don't know if that's going to be what we sell or not. Now, we always, uh, the thing I like to talk about is always is the pose being similar to the card. It's not exactly the same, but pretty close there. It's also a nice looking card with the hologram uh, Colts logo in the background. Good looking card for the late 90s. Very nice card. We like. And they that. actually did their own card here. Unlike you know, there was also an era where they would just basically like sign up with Score that year and just you know copy off their design basically and have a variant. But uh, here is Peyton throwing the football right there. 
And I definitely know oh, there's the helmet. I thought I dropped it. I didn't want to. You don't want to lose the helmet. Especially with two cats behind me that'll pounce at any moment when something drops. Like, I will buy, if, like, sometimes I'll buy loose ones on eBay, but if they don't have the helmet, I don't want. So there you oh, go. I would agree. Yeah, they have to have the helmet. Yeah, football, yeah, I got, if it's, if it, there's no helmet, I don't want it. But, yeah, that's a good-looking Peyton Manning right there. He's, uh, you know, definitely having a nice uh, post-playing uh, career, for sure, making the most of it with the Manning cast, among other things. I feel like he's at every country music awards show, anything Tennessee-related. He is also, he does left, still keep up on the Avalanche, I believe, in the Nuggets, because he does, like, talk about those teams. So he still uh, he he embraces still Denver, too. Area. Embraces Denver. There it is. There's Peyton Manning, and he's going to join our starting lineup studio audience next week. Uh, going from left to right on the top row, we got uh, Ricky Henderson there. Uh, you know, I'm a little bummed that the A's are going to be leaving. I do know I have some time before that happens, but we'll see how that goes. Daryl Moose Johnston. From 1997, he was the guy that got unboxed last week uh, in honor of Dave being a Cowboys fan. Our guest last week, Cortez Kennedy uh, from the Seahawks. I decided to go Pacific Northwest for whatever reason for the rest of them. So there you got uh, Sean Kemp from uh, the 1995 NBA series and then Gary Payton right below him from the 97 series. Then working our way the uh, back the other way, Theo Flory, Pavel Bure, and of course, Jay Buhner. Why the hell did you trade Jay Buhner? I love it. There you go. So, yeah, I don't know why Pacific Northwest, but as I'm doing it, like it kind of just came together on its own. So that was kind of the theme for this week. Yeah, you're going for the, you know, West Coast vibes there. I, I, I dig it. I think it's pretty strong. Pretty solid way to close out the show. Pretty solid way to close out the first December edition of Rip and Riff here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm. We got a couple. We're going to have a Christmas special coming up in a couple of weeks. Maybe we'll have a couple of guests before then, but. You know, you know how Jared and I do. We're here for you each and every Saturday, opening cards, opening mystery slabs, unboxing starting lineups. That's what we do. Mystery Ooh. pack right here. What will be in it that Adam will be opening in a few weeks? Who the hell knows? Ooh, I'm try- I see the color, but that's all I got. I got nothing else. So that really is not too much. Yeah, we're going to be sending each other some uh, packs blindly and opening them up on the air. So that'll be fun. Um, but for Mr. Uh, Jared Moore, I'm at Pucking Thoughts, Adam Bernard. We'll be back with you soon here on Rip and Riff here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm.